All right. Um, in this video, we're going to do a couple more nonlinear systems. Okay, you see how that second equation has a similar look to one of the equations we had um, previously. It has x squared plus y squared equals a number. That's going to wind up being a circle. Okay? Uh, this problem, the first equation, has multiplication in between the x and the y. So it's, it's not a line either. It's not x plus y equal 3, which would be a line. So both of these equations are not linear. Uh, what we're going to do is, kind of like in the first one, we're going to pick one of the variables to get by itself. I'll, I'll go ahead and just try to get y by itself in that first equation. So what I'm going to do is divide both sides by x, okay? So that first equation becomes y equals 3 over x, okay? And then the second equation, I'm just going to bring over here, keep our system together. And so we haven't done anything yet other than rearrange that first equation. We still have the same two equations and two variables, the same two sets of ordered pairs. All right, so just, just to give you a glimpse of what's going on here, y equal 3 over x will look something like this if we were to graph it. And x squared plus y squared equal 10 would do something like this. Okay, so we potentially have four points of intersection that we're going to find. Okay, now you don't, aren't expected to know that ahead of time. I just thought having been looking at that um, might be helpful just to give you an idea of why certain things happen here. Okay, so what we're going to do, since we're looking for points of intersection, we know the y in one equation and the y in the other at a point of intersection would have to be the same. And the equals, y equals 3 over x means 3 over x and y are interchangeable. So I'm going to plug in 3 over x right there for y. Okay. Well, that gives me this equation. Okay. So this equation says x squared, and then I've got 3 over x times itself. That would be 9 over x squared. 3 times 3 and x times x. All right, so what I have right now is an equation that has a denominator. Okay, so this is a rational equation. This, this would be in about chapter 6 if you took Math 100. And if you have a rational equation, you can clear the fractions. By looking at all the denominators, it's just that there's only one here, and just multiply both sides by that. So I'm going to multiply the left side by x squared, and I'm going to go ahead and distribute it. You know, you would multiply both terms by x squared and multiply the right side by x squared. Now, x squared plus x squared is not what we have. That would be 2x squared. x squared times x squared would be x to the fourth, okay? So we have an x to the fourth plus just nine, because the x squared would cancel out, equals 10x squared at this point, okay? So now, even though this isn't technically quadratic, we're gonna use quadratic techniques to solve this. I'm gonna subtract 10x squared from both sides. And when I do, I wanna put these in order. So it's x to the fourth, let me move it over here, okay? So it's x to the fourth minus 10x squared plus nine equals zero, okay? So even though it's to the fourth power, so it's not technically quadratic, I can still use factoring, okay? So instead of an x and an x, I'm gonna need x squared and x squared, but then, between 1 and 9 and 3 times 3, I'm going to choose the 1 and the 9 since I'm trying to make a 10 happen in the middle. So that would give me a 1x squared and a 9x squared. Now I need it to be negative 10, so I'm going to make both of those negative. And that's okay because negative 1 times negative 9 does give me positive 9. All right, now once I get it factored that far, I can from there keep factoring because x squared minus one breaks down more, or I can set each factor equal to zero, like I normally do, 
then keep factoring or move to the square root method. I'm going to show you the square root method because sometimes at this point in some problems, it winds up not being factorable, but you still have to get the solution. And the only way to do it is square root method. So this will help you if they're ever, if from here down, from here down, they're not factorable. This is what you would do. Okay, now once we get to there, we'll square root both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. And so we wind up with x equaling plus or minus 1. All right, when we do that to the other side, okay, we get x equals plus or minus 3. Okay. All right, so now what we have here are four different x's. They're all x's. So these aren't ordered pairs yet. So what we need to do now is we need to find the y's. Okay. So we're going to take the x equal 1, the x equal negative 1, the x equal 3, and the x equal negative 3, and we're going to plug them in, and we're going to find the y value. So the equation I'm going to use for that on all of them is y equals x divided by 3. So I'm going to come in now, and on all of them, I'm going to take whatever the x was, put it in there. I have it backwards. It was 3 over x. So what I'm going to do is come in here and plug in on all of these. I'm going to plug in the x in that denominator. So when x is 1, when x is negative 1, when x is 3, when, when x is negative 3, and we wind up getting y equals 3, y equals negative 3, y equals 1, y equals negative 1. And see, it's important that you keep those organized with what you plugged in. Okay? because you got to put the, the 1 with the 3, the negative 1 with the negative 3, the 3 with the 1, and the negative 3 with the negative 1. That would be the solution set right there. Okay. All right, and then one last one that I chose to, to do is this guy. All right, and I wanted to look at him because on this one, We've got the X's and the Y's on the same side. It kind of has a feel of an elimination problem from way back when. It's just that we have the squareds involved. But we're actually going to approach it like we would solving by elimination. So what you would do is you would look to see which variable would be easiest to eliminate if there were one. Okay, I think you could equally easily eliminate the X as the Y. So I'm just going to pick X. If I'm going to try to eliminate the x squareds, I need to look at the 3 and the 4 and think about a common multiple of those. See, 3 and 4, I can turn those into 12 by multiplying on the top by 4 and multiplying on the bottom by 3. All right, then what I'd want to do is multiply or put a negative on one of them because I don't want both pieces to turn out to be 12. I want one to be 12x squared, the other one to be negative 12x squared. So let me put a negative on that guy. Now sometimes you don't have to do things to both equations, or sometimes there's already negatives involved, so you don't need the negative. You're, what you're trying to do, what you've got to understand, is that you're trying to make this happen. If I can make the number in front of the x squared on the top and the bottom, to be opposites, then when I add the equations, that's going to cancel out. So let's distribute the 4 throughout. That would equal 70 and 70, so that would be 140. Multiply negative 3 throughout. Be super careful about all your signs. That would be negative 144. And so then I get a negative y squared equals a negative 4. And that negative y squared is really a negative 1 y squared. So I'm going to divide both sides by negative 1. And that gives me y squared has to be positive 4. Okay. All right, so that's good. Now I can just square root 
Don't forget to get both square roots. So y is going to be plus or minus 2. Okay. All right, so we found the y first, but we're still looking for ordered pairs. Okay. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to find my x's now. Okay. And there's really not a best equation, so I'm just going to take the top one. You could take either one. They're all positive. And what I'm going to do is right here where y is, I'm going to be plugging in a positive 2. Then I'm going to plug in a negative 2. So what if I'm going to use the y equal 2 first and find the x. So I'm going to have 3x squared plus 2. And in there, I'm going to put a positive 2. Oops. Okay. So when I do that, that becomes 3x squared plus, and watch all your like order of operations and things from earlier algebra classes. 2 squared has to be done before you multiply by 2. So it's 4 times 2, which is 8. So this would become 3x squared equals 27. And then the 2, exponent 2, only applies to the x. That 3 is just being multiplied out in front. So get rid of it. And you wind up with x squared equaling 9. Okay. Now you've got to square root both sides. Okay. I meant that to be red right there. Okay, so I'm square rooting both sides. Don't forget the plus or minus. And when I do that, I get x equals plus or minus 3. All right, now that was when x, when y was 2, I mean, x was plus or minus 3. So you might want to, at that point, go ahead and think, okay, so a y of 2 when x is 3 when x is negative 3, the y was 2. You got those two ordered pairs. All right, but that was just plugging in y equal 2. So what happens when I plug in y equals negative 2? Okay, if I were to do that, I'd get 3x squared plus 2, but then right there I'm putting a negative 2 this time. Okay, all right, so when I do that, I get 3x squared plus 2 times positive 4 again, which gives me an 8 again. And so from here to the end, I don't really need to write all those steps again. I know it's going to work out just like before, and I'll get x could be positive or negative 3. So that is when x is 3, y, when y is negative 2, x could be 3. When y is negative 2, x could be negative 3. So you actually have these four ordered pairs that would turn out to be the solutions to that system. And this one I did because I did want you to know that sometimes you can use the elimination method. So on this one, it worked to try to eliminate one of the variables rather than using substitution. Okay. All right. So that gives you a, a few problems to be working on there. And you got some homework that you're doing. All right. So don't forget, we have virtual class sessions where I can answer questions at the start of the class. <clears throat> and then also I have office hours that are kind of open for you to, to come to to ask me to, to work out maybe issues you're having on homework and that kind of thing. All right. So let's go ahead and get this posted.